one, Tarnation! Uh, I meant to do that. Hello, right, folks, this is Apple Geek, and here we are with another episode of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. This is Season 8, Episode 4. Uh, just a bit of an announcement before I get into this. Uh, I just want you guys to be aware that given all the factors of things going on this season, uh, my reactions are probably not going to be ever uploaded on the weekends. It's probably going to be more sometime midweek, uh, each week for me to get the new episode released. Um, you know, a lot of things are going into that. The content ID rules that Hasbro started using on YouTube has been making things difficult for us. You know, reactions are getting automatically blocked, whereas before they were always manually detected and monetized by Hasbro. Getting Hasbro to unblock them and monetize them has been a bit challenging for some reason. There seems to be some consistency issues in how Hasbro responds to these uh, requests. And also, I just there's a lot of things for me coming up this year that are going to have conflicts on the weekends. I've got four convention trips planned this year. The first one is going to be Winnie City in Chicago uh, next weekend. And just based on past experience, it is really difficult to try and take equipment along and do a reaction from a hotel room. And, you know, my laptop is not very good for that. And I always worry about breaking my microphone and things like that. So probably I'm not going to be doing that this year, meaning I won't be able to watch the episodes till I get home. So that's another delay. And there's just other things that I know will be coming up this year, too, where I'll have to go places on weekends. So... Um, you know, it, just with everything the way it is, I'm just telling you guys, you know, please don't be expecting my reactions out, you know, right away in the weekends. It's likely going to be more midweek for, throughout the season. If I can get them done sooner, I will, but I just need you to understand there's a lot of factors going on that are going to cause delays for you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make sure I do it. I will not not watch these episodes. It's just, it, I, I'm going to need some time on, on these because of all the, the, extenuating circumstances so anyway um enough about all that um that's really all i had to say on that so yeah on to the episode uh episode four i don't have any idea what's going on in this episode no spoilers this time so yeah um just a big surprise to look forward to so without any further ado episode four starting now oh sweet for the sanctuary hmm we gonna see Discord in this one? Saw him in the sanctuary in the the new intro. <laughs> Don't worry, Angel. Angel. I forget you. <sighs> There's nothing so peaceful as a cuddly friend's picnic. Okay, what's gonna go wrong? What? Who is Rar Rarity? Oh goodness, Rarity, what's the matter? <sighs> a better question would be, what isn't the matter? Oh dear, do you want to have Drama. and talk about it? <coughs> I would love to, darling, but I just don't have the time. The Cantalot Royal Fashion Show is practically upon us, and the cornerstone piece of my collection just isn't working. Well, that sounds serious. Hmm. Okay. What is I going to get wrapped in another serious. fashion show? The entire collection is designed around it. Do you need help knitting? I've started making tea cozies. It's an elephant. I... It's a work in progress. I don't need help making clothes. Sassy Saddles is pitching in. Plus, I'll be pulling oh. all three of my Manhattan assistants. All three? Does that mean we'll have to close Rarity for you? That's just it, darling. This is Manhattan's busiest shopping season. And I can't just close the shop. So I was hoping you might consider running it. Oh! Of course, I'm happy to help. <laughs> though I'm surprised you picked me. Wow. Okay. Well, I may have asked a few others. <laughs> Sorry, but we've got a wonderful show coming up. Sorry, but it's uh -huh. pie season and the pie worms are piling up. It's pie season? Sorry, what? I've got a curriculum to make up. Nope. True. No. Just, nope. just no. Nope. <laughs> Packed, but I hear Fluttershy is free, and you haven't asked Boulder. Uh, uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter who else I asked, because I couldn't be happier than wow. you. Wow. Last day. choice. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's diabetes right there. 
Okay. Uh, well, I mean, Fluttershy has had some things to do with sewing and fashion and stuff, so not sure why she wasn't an earlier choice on that list. But I'm really hoping that all these cameos we're seeing in this new intro we're going to be seeing sometime this season. Well, it sounds like we're going to see Sassy Saddles here. Uh, so that's cool. Hmm. Fluttershy running a boutique, though. I'm... Not sure how this is gonna go. <sighs> I think I forgot how big this shop was. How well, I haven't seen this anything? place in season six, so. Oh, darling, it's easy to track. The store is divided into sections. Fake it till you make it. Classic, modern, sophisticated, okay. avant-garde, traditional, and obtuse. <laughs> obtuse. And, of course, each section is divided by season, color, and price. It's a classic SCP system. Yeah, naturally. Then it's just a little ring and ponies up. A little fluff and fold. Voila! Aww. But, of course, that's the easy part. <gasps> it is? Yeah, dealing with customers. You know, the real focus of rarity for you is on the customer. Mm-hmm. Care to give it a try? Um... Okay. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Hello, um, welcome to Rarity for you. What can I help you with? I need something classic but modern, something with drama but also understated. Um, okay. Are all those things opposites? Yes. Pretty much. <laughs> so, but how can I? I'm sorry. Are you asking me how to do your job? No. But oh boy. I just, um, if I may, I'm thinking noir esque minimalist, but with a twist. Perhaps a tapered hem. Interesting. It's like you read my mind. <laughs> <That's> psychic? <laughs> what, what was. That <laughs> laugh! You <laughs> say yes! <laughs> that laugh is. so fake. <laughs> Looks so easy. Oh, darling, yes, she now. does. You've conquered your shyness a thousand times over. You can't let a few fashion ponies undo all that progress. Mm. Well, I guess not. You simply must access your inner strength and allow it to shine through. How? This is going to be a true uh, test for Fluttershy. Meditation? Oh, power posing works wonders whenever I P Power it. posing? Try these. Confident warrior. Gold medalist. Those are going to be memes. <laughs> or not. We need to leave. Oh, hey, Blue Bonnet. We're going to catch and the others. Oh, goodness, look at the time. Yes, 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 yes. Go, go. I'm right behind you. Hmm. You're not going to be here in your workroom? <laughs> no. Nope. That's kind of the point. Cantalot tomorrow, and I'll be up all night, even with the help of all of my assistants. <laughs> Well, not all my assistants. <gasps> she still got the records. <laughs> Ever since you convinced oh. me to let them live in the shop, these beastie sweeties have been nothing but helpful. And I'm sure they'll help me let my. And she can talk to them, so. <laughs> oh, there's so much diabetes in this episode. <laughs> not try a new outfit. Hmm. Think of it as a costume for your role as shop pony. You know what they say, clothes make the pony. Um, sure. Who says that? You know, yeah. them. <laughs> Nobody. All right. I'm sure you and your pony friends will do just fine. Ta -ta! <sighs> I hope she's right. Uh-oh. Here goes nothing. Go for it! You can do it! Welcome to Rarity for You. What can I help you with? What's the thread count of this shirt? I can't be seen in anything less than a thousand. Yeah. Uh, thread count? Um, oh, I'm not sure. Let's see. Um, one, two, three, <laughs> Yeah, just, just... Um, excuse me for just one second. No. Ask them, ask the raccoons, they know everything. Is 
Maggie's customers. What am I gonna do? Well, I've never tried to act before, but I oh no, it's worth a shot. Okay, that's a new look. <laughs> Severe, but not unapproachable. Acceptable business attire. Oh, wow! That sound like a shop pony to you? That sounds scarily like rarity. <laughs> so sorry for the wait. The shop has some staffing issues today. Yes, well, I still haven't had an answer on this thread count. Here at Rarity for You, our merchandise defies typical attempts to quantify its quality, but rest assured it will make you the envy of all who see it. Wow! In that case, I'll take three! Okay! <laughs> Ta -ta. <sighs> <laughs> Interesting? Backfire somehow. I just don't see how yet. Uh, whatever works, right? I don't know about you, but I have a full day of shopping planned. And if even one shop pony isn't up to my standards, well, I shall make my displeasure quite plain. Oh no! You are Rarity's having second thoughts. <laughs> Can't an old fashion show or no? I simply can't leave Fluttershy to fend for herself with these main hot nights. Hmm. Oh, darling, I'm afraid I can't stop. Potential emergency. Ah. Well, whatever it is, I'm quite certain the pony you left in charge can handle it. Oh, she's simply divine. <laughs> A what? Well, I always knew Fluttershy had it in her. <laughs> And there's still time to catch the train to Cantalot. Alrighty then. It's a unique play on the old standard. We call it a rarity cup with a triple cross stitch hem and a guacamole chevre pattern fabric. A guacamole? What? You mean chevron? If I had meant <laughs> chevron, then that's what I would have said. Oh no. <laughs> of course. It's so unique. So in vogue. It must be mine. <laughs> This is all mind games. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. But I feel like I should push the snootiness further. Why? If you really want to help, I suppose some tea would be nice. Oh, if you don't mind. Just don't lose yourself in this Fluttershy. I like my accessories bold and shiny, and I'm just not seeing anything nearly bold and shiny enough. I'm afraid both personalities work with your whole model. Perhaps pointy. Pointy? Yes! I must have pointy! Hmm. <laughs> not every pony can pull off a found object, but you nearly get there. I need like a red carpet glitz and glamour gown. I don't even know what to say about this. Casual, but like still artsy and a total head turner. Yes, casual chic prêt à porter is very branché this season. <laughs> okay. Uh, like I don't understand any of that, so like I don't care about it. <sighs> um, one moment, please. <laughs> Here we go again. Character. Okay, I've got like this high key savage look for you. It's a totally live ensemble with Valley like, Girl thingies that sparkle and make the whole squad go, whoa, that pony is woke. <laughs> that is like exactly what I need. Hey. Okay. Whoa. This store is a desperate wasteland of nothingness. Do you have anything in black? Well, you're a lively character. Can you like chill for one sec? Be well, now we're gonna see Goth Fluttershy. It's not like the quality <laughs> of shopping can be made better with black leather and metal studs. <gasps> oh my word! <laughs> uh, that jacket. 
completes me. <laughs> uh oh. It's like lukewarm. It's barely drinkable. This tea must always be at a precise temperature. From trotting him. See that it doesn't happen again. You change costumes fast, and now you're starting to betray yourself. Whoa, that color is like almost too lit for you. The blackness of this vest is a reflection of your soul. This hemline mm -hmm. is nothing short of an inspiration of craft's ponyship. Are you sure you deserve it? <sighs> You're losing yourself in these characters, Fluttershy. <laughs> oh no! Okay, I'm at the school now. <laughs> so, Rarity is busy at an important fashion show, and Fluttershy is running her shop in Manhattan, but to do it, she's playing different shop pony characters that are all mean? Uh-huh. That about sums it up! In the world did you figure that out, Spike? I'm not a Dragon Charade champion for nothing. I can't imagine Flutter would okay. ever be mean to her animal friends. This sounds serious. Spike, tell everyone mm -hmm. it's time to head back to Saddle Row. Oh boy. I wouldn't think it was possible to make something so dowdy, even I just I, I I don't know what to say about this. Here you are. It's like a scream in the void, empty and ultimately meaningless. I would seriously help you right now, but like, I don't wanna, you know? <sighs> yeah, it's like, see? No, I'm kidding. This is worse than we thought. She's being horrible to every pony. Uh, are you sure that she even Fluttershy? Maybe it's just three really, really fast ponies that <laughs> really, really look like her. Well, let's find out. Nope. Hey, Fluttershy, are you running the shop or performing in a one pony show? If you don't mind, I can only improve the taste of one customer at a time. You have to wait your turn. Oh, honestly, these small town ponies come to the big city and think they can behave any way they please. What? You oh my word. Cottage isn't even in the town. She is completely Look, lost we came it. here because we were worried and we care about you. Let's get out of this aura of positivity before it consumes us. Wow. As fun as this Fluttershy switcheroo game is, Smokey, Smokey Jr. and Soft Pat are really concerned. Yeah, they came all the way to Pony. So what's going to be the wake-up call? How did they get Should all the way to Pony, though? Stayed there? This shop is like a no rodent zone now. Oh. She called them rodents? Fluttershy, I understand why you think you have to act this way for these <sighs> That's houses, racist, by the way. <laughs> but there's got to be a better way. Goodness, you are so right. Please, step this way so that we may discuss your concerns. And she's just going to kick her out. Come to your senses. Yeah. Indeed. Man, I did not expect you to go this far. I... Mm. Collection and it's still not hey, Sassy right. Saddles. Oh, darling, I'm afraid we've literally run out of time. It's up to you. Go out there and sell it. <laughs> well, I don't understand. When I left Fluttershy, she had everything well in her. Well, things might she have been sort all right of did, that, but they're definitely not all right now. She's acting worse than the worst Manhattan that I ever saw. She kicked us out of the shop. Mm -hmm. Smoky, Smoky Junior, and Soft Pat. Rodent. Rodent. Why didn't you say that from the start? She obviously needs help. Come on. Wow. 
She's really fast with those costume changes. Too shallow for a look with this much unfeeling depth. Why is he even still there? Didn't he buy something already? Ugh. Your style isn't even on the same page. Turn away. Turn you sold that to her. What? I can't even. Yeah, pretty much. I, I I just can't even right now. I think not, dear. This is all far too fashion forward for the likes of you. Oh, well, I never. All right, can somebody dump a, bu a bucket of ice water on her head here or oh, something? Was bad. Bad. This is worse than I could have possibly imagined. Rarity. I'm so glad you're here. Finally, a pony who understands that the couture in this shop is far too brilliant. Man, she's really gone the elitist route here. What? <laughs> you like totally get how lame customers are? Oh no! Watching them leave filled me with a sweet sadness. Uh, and you'll be pleased to hear that I've taken care of your rodents. She's turned into Pinky with the the, the crazy fashion changes here. You're fired. Terminated. Well, good luck replacing me. <sighs> well, thankfully I. <laughs> I always thought she was too controlling. What? You, you, you are what? Too. Whatever. Now I. What? I know, right? I mean, uh, um, uh, actually, you're like. Did Fluttershy totally actually totally suffer a personality like, split here? Okay. Glad that's over. Ah! I guess I owe every pony an apology. I'm so confused right now. I got so caught up trying to please all of your customers. What customers? I. I you might have taken my sales pony characters a little too far. You think? <laughs> I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. You know I was only pretending, right? I. Mm. But Fluttershy, why did you think you needed to be some pony else to run the shop? I guess acting like the ponies of Saddle Row gave me the confidence to interact with them. Darling, I'd never trust some horrible Saddle Row pony to run my shop. That's why I wanted a friend to do it. Well, I'd definitely rather be myself anyway, even if I don't exactly have what it takes to be a shop pony. I wouldn't sell yourself short. Those sales yeah. pony characters all came from you. Yeah. I yeah, that's kind of scary. Have what it takes. <laughs> Maybe a little too much. <laughs> yeah. You have all the inner strength you need, but I think we prefer it coming from our sweet, regular Fluttershy. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. That's just given me the inspiration I'm looking for. Hmm. Okay. The missing piece for my new collection. The warrior of inner strength. Oh, now that's awesome. That is awesome. Oh, it's lovely, Rarity. I'm just sorry you had to leave the Canterlot Royal Fashion Show early. Oh, darling, making the perfect dress is scads more satisfying than showing it off. Oh, yes. oh, 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 oh. Ooh, striking dress, Rarity. I certainly hope you aren't trying to undercut the royal fashion show by ducking out and debuting it here. What? I... No, I, I have you considered the possibility that the royal fashion show is trying to undercut rarities by continuing on in Canterlot and not oh. leaving the whole affair here? Hmm? Have you? Oh. No. Wow! <laughs> I... Okay? I... Mm. I... 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 I don't even know what to say right now. I. I gotta be honest. I I don't think I've ever ended a reaction feeling quite as confused as I am right now. 
now. Like the 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 the, the turnaround for Fluttershy apologizing like was too fast of the different person I mm. I gotta I need some time to absorb this one. I am I am thoroughly confused right now. Hopefully when I come back for you guys I'll have something to say, so, some sort of explanation for this. I, I, I gotta think about this for a while, so I'll be back in a bit for you guys. Okay, well, I have had a lot of time to sit and think about this, chat, uh, chat with friends about this, and kind of look over some past material on the show, and just really try to put the pieces of this together and figure out what the heck just happened in this episode. Um gonna say right up front this is definitely not one of my more favorite episodes i mean it's not that i hated the episode there was a lot of good things going on things that i liked um and, and there's things that i actually liked a lot better about or made more sense after i got to thinking about things and you know un better understanding what was going on but really the ending of this episode is where things just really kind of fell apart for me and Honestly, it's my least favorite of the Fluttershy-focused episodes, I, I have to say. And it, it just... Part of my confusion for this is just, like, on one hand, I'm seeing things that actually, for Fluttershy, it actually isn't more in character than you might think. And I know people are going to be attacking her about it, and I feel the need to come to her defense on some things here. Well, at the same time, I'm very frustrated with what she did in, in the end uh, of this. So... This, this hopefully will all make more sense as I explain all my thoughts here. But uh, I've got a lot of notes, so I'm going to try and get through this reasonably quick. Um, yeah, in interesting that this is kind of the second one in a row, the second episode in a row, where we've got a main character seemingly going completely opposite of, you know, acting the opposite of what they should be like, based on how we view the characters. But with, with Pinky in the mod couple, it made a lot of sense. You know, due to stuff I was pointing out, I, I thought it worked well. This one didn't work out so well. But uh, first first up, I need to establish some things here. And this is the part where I'm coming to Fluttershy's defense. It is not at all strange for Fluttershy to be mean. Let me be quite clear about that. As much as she is typically gentle, kind, and just, you know, a, a sweetheart... There, there are multiple past precedents where she loses it. Let me go through some of these. Going all the way back to Season 1, uh, the first... I think it's actually the first uh, Fluttershy-focused episode we got in the entire series. Dragon Shy. You know, she was you know very timid and shy and non-confrontational and whatever. Was kind of fighting the whole trip. She did not want to be there, not want to be involved with it. But then she saw this dragon basically hurting all her friends and she kind of lost it and just got in his face and shut him down and told him off. You know, and it's... You could, you could maybe argue that she was just kind of being stern with him, but it really came off as, as just kind of a bit on the mean side. I mean, regardless of how you view that, it's like her character just pulled a complete 180 right in that scenario where, you know, went from timid, shy, you know, fearful to... Bam, I am going to handle this, and you are going to listen to me, and whatever. She kind of snapped. Then it happened, sort of, that same kind of thing happened in Stairmaster, when she ha had to tell off the cockatrice who was turning all her friends to stone. Um, even better example, The Best Night Ever, Season 1 Finale. I think we can all remember when she burst through that door saying, You're going to love me! Yeah, there was no sweet... Uh, the sweetheart Fluttershy in that. That was just like her getting completely exasperated and going full rage. <laughs> um, there, there was nothing stern about that. That was she was just extremely angry. Um, and of course, we saw in season two in putting your hoof down with Iron Will. She, she got too wrapped up in the the assertiveness, um, you know, training and whatnot, and uh was getting very mean with uh, with a lot of the the ponies of Ponyville with her I mean she was insulting her friends you know dumping cartloads of garbage on other ponies and you know just a lot of mean things there so and then of course look what happened with Saddle Rager and the Power Ponies 
she kind of went off the, the, the there again it's more like coming to someone's defense a little bit but i mean okay so a little bug got hurt a little bit and she just snapped went flutter hulk and just beat the snot out of the maniac <laughs> so point is fluttershy has this side to her she's got this streak in her okay and it fluttershy has a lot of inner strength the problem is being able to tap into and channel it properly you know it's like she she needs to just you know poke a little hole and get you know take a little bit here and apply it properly when when necessary instead it tends to be more pressure builds pressure builds pressure builds then boom the dam breaks and blah so yeah that that's the thing that she needs to work at she's not lacking strength she's just lacking the ability to tap into it in a controlled manner so so that that's established um yeah. also there's there's a lot of things that fluttershy is probably very good at that she just doesn't know she's good at because she's never either never been in a situation where she's needed to try something or has lacked the confidence to actually try it and there's examples of this too in past episodes uh, with uh philly vanilli we found out she's a fantastic singer and, uh, and you know loved singing but she found out that she loved it even more singing for you know and performing for others she just lacked the confidence to actually do it publicly up on stage in, in, in the spotlight but i mean clearly the fact that she you know kept encouraging the the pony tones to take all these these uh singing gigs and whatever because she was having the time of her life singing she just had never had the confidence to actually go try it in in that respect before a uh, better example, Buckball Season. Pinky and Fluttershy found themselves to be fantastic at the sport, putting AJ and Dash to shame, which was surprising. Uh, but, you know, it wasn't a performance thing. They were just having fun, and it came naturally. And that was fantastic. But then when they started getting kind of pushed into a corner on, like, we gotta win, you gotta get in the zone and train hard, and, you know, all, all this stuff, then, once again, and Fluttershy kind of snapped, and she got in... Applejack's and Rainbow Dash's faces and just chewed them out in public view on the train for, you know, what they were doing to, to her and Pinky. I mean, well, there again, she was coming to, to uh, Pinky's defense on that, basically. You know, her, her strength tends to really come out when, when uh, her friends are in trouble. <laughs> so, uh, so is that. And then it... You know, that brings me to the whole acting thing. We saw Fluttershy essentially doing method acting in uh, with these personas in, in this episode. You know, she got, like, into character to such an extreme degree, degree that she basically shut off her normal, ordinary personality and just be completely became another uh, character. In this case, three different characters and bouncing back and forth. Well, there's also precedence for acting skills, too. Because let's go back to Scaremaster. Uh, you know, when she pulled the, you know, got the Flutterbat outfit on and and uh, proceeded to, well, granted with Angel's help, proceeded to scare the living daylights out of her friends, which was very atypical for, you know, a performance from Fluttershy. And, uh, I mean, of course, she felt very bad about doing it. She didn't like scaring her friends, whatever, even though they loved it after the fact, she felt horrible for doing it. And, and I, I don't fault her for that. The point is, she pulled off a fantastic performance. She got super into that character and made it real. So there again, she has these hidden talents that she just doesn't typically tap into. And in this case, she tapped into that hidden talent and the dam burst on her her confidence. And it, it instead of nice graceful river, we got flood. <laughs> so... Uh, and like I said, uh, you know, her strength tends to come out when helping her friends. Well, in this case, she really wanted to help Rarity out of a tight spot because she's, you know, that kind of a friend. And uh, But yet she'd never worked retail before, which is a very difficult job. It's a completely new situation, a new angle in which we're uh, here again. She lacked experience and thus lacked confidence. And she had to figure out once again how to tap into her confidence and, and bring out her inner strength. You know, I relate to this a lot. I, I really do. I, I'm the type of person where when I'm put in a new situation with something that I have no experience before, I'm very kind of like, 
you know, I back away. I'm like kind of timid and shy. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't want to mess this up. Like, this isn't for me. I don't want to, you know, get involved with this, whatever. But then once I actually get into something and figure it out and get that experience with it, then I gain confidence in that because I know more what I'm doing now and things work a lot better. So I, I totally understand you know, where she was coming from on this. And, and you know, it was a situation here where Fluttershy was getting really stressed out by the, the thought of letting Rarity down. I mean, you know, Rarity put all her faith and trust in Fluttershy to keep her shop running during the busy season while she was off on the fashion show. You know, Fluttershy was probably scared to death of, of failing in, in her task. And it probably wouldn't have been that big of a deal you know, Rarity probably would have lost some sales, you know, for a day or so. You know, she would have bounced back from it. I mean, it wouldn't have been the worst thing in the world. But Fluttershy is the type of person where that just would not have sit well with her no matter... She, she would have felt like a failure no matter what. So, so she was putting a lot of stress on herself in this situation, which just exasperated the issue with her lack of confidence. And then she ended up putting on these different outfits and... Uh, taking on these different personas to try and compensate for for that as she noted she felt like in order to properly interact she didn't think that her own personality was capable of interacting with these you know snooty snobbish main hat knights uh, so she had to adopt different personas that were more relatable and allowed her to interact with them at a more comfortable level and it was working. It was actually working very well. And, and I don't necessarily fault her for that. I mean, it, what she was doing was sales 101. I mean, you you find some common ground with the person you're selling to. You you know you play to that. Play to the play to the strengths of that. And you know even if you're not you can't give them an exact answer of what they're asking. You find uh, you know another angle, another answer to give them that changes their the way they think about the situation. And you convince them that this is what they actually want and then sell it to them Cl close the deal that's sales she was doing it very well and as dash pointed out later you definitely have what it takes to do this so um so so it was working well and you know and there was that little bit of friction initially where she said that uh, like she kind of acted really snooty herself and the raccoons were like huh and then she turned around and gave him a wink, like, you know, hey, it's just part of the act. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is great. If that's where she'd left it, things would have been pretty good. But, again, she has a tendency to, uh, to you know, lack self-control in, in her confidence. And, therefore, things got out of control. And I said, oh, maybe I need to be a little more snooty. Like, hey, a little bit worked well, maybe a lot will work better. Now, this is one of those cases where a lot ends up being catastrophic. You know, a little is good, a lot is bad. So and she just got so deeply wrapped up in these personas, she completely lost sight of, of what was important. She lost sight of herself, her own nature, and she lost sight of her actual goal of selling merchandise to, to customers. I mean, that's what she was supposed to be doing to help out Rarity. But she got so snobbish, so elitist, that that she just I mean she got to the point like I'm not even gonna sell you clothes like you're not fit to wear these clothes get out of the shop you know it's like I have no time for you that was not even remotely helpful in any way to herself or to Rarity or to anyone so uh, it, now I'm willing to let that slide a bit a little bit I mean it's that's one of these cases where you know a, a a problem is exaggerated for the purpose of, you know, teaching a lesson in a cartoon. So there, there is that aspect of it, and and also, again, it's not without precedent where we've seen Fluttershy kind of lose herself in a new mentality and do things that she wouldn't normally do. That isn't so unbelievable. But the 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 the, the problem for me here though is just. There's a point where a line got crossed. I mean, she was taking it so far, she, you know, insulted all of her friends. I mean, pretty much, you know, put them outside and slammed the door in their face, literally. You know, greatly hurt them, you know, greatly hurt the, you know, the critters, you know, calling them rodents repeatedly and, and whatever. I mean, she was just, apparently she thought that, that she was 
just acting like it was all part of the the act in order to fulfill her goal but at that point she'd completely lost sight of her goal and couldn't also couldn't see just how badly she was hurting everyone around her um and, and again this is really kind of going the way it was and putting your hoof down so not without precedent but this was kind of it got to a worse point even i actually thought it, it, near near the end there with all the rapid costume changes she was doing and the warping around like Pinky normally does I honestly thought that at some point we were going to have the camera pan out and there was going to be three different Fluttershies all visible on screen at the same time I thought she'd actually suffered like some drastic you know multiple personality disorder you know mind split or something and actually became three different ponies I mean in a world of magic anything's possible right so I mean that that is a bit extreme, but my mind is actually getting to that point. I'm like, is is this actually going that far? Or something. Um, don't get me wrong. I mean the three the three personalities for Fluttershy were were fun to watch. They they really were. And as Rarity pointed out later, you know all of those characters came from within Fluttershy. So these are actually all sort of like different aspects of her personality. Uh, it, it was fun to see that, but. It just, I said she was letting it all go too far. So, but then the, the the thing, the part where it really just completely went off the rails, just completely fell apart, is the ending. Okay, she was being completely unreasonable, you know, ignoring all her friends, you know, nobody could reason with her. Anything they tried to say to her to get her to wake up and realize what was going on was just falling completely on deaf ears. And, uh, you know, it got to the point where Rarity had to come back and fire all, all three of these personalities. That was weird in and of itself, but it, even in that, as, as each one of them was getting fired, they were just kind of, you know, acting in a uh, rather disrespectful manner. Like, you know, the first one was like, well, good luck replacing me, you know, good luck finding anyone who's good enough to replace me. Stuff, it just, like, there was no acknowledgement of wrongdoing no remorse it was just you know all like still a part of the act and then like two seconds later after the final one had gotten fired rarity turns back around and boom there's original fluttershy standing there you know kind of tail between her legs like oh i guess i owe everybody an apology what what this was a light switch. There was no... Uh, uh, there was no path to resolution. It's just like, doing everything wrong, doing everything wrong, you're fired. Oh, I'm sorry, I owe everybody an apology. I, I mean, it just like, how how did we... Let's watch that clip again. You are terminated! Well, good luck replacing me! <sighs> well, thankfully I... <laughs> I always thought she was too controlling. You, you, you are terminated too! Whatever. Now I... <gasps> I know, right? I mean, uh, um... Uh, actually, you're, like, totally terminated as well! Like, okay. <sighs> well, I'm glad that's over. <gasps> I guess I owe every pony an apology. I... I, I just... I can't even. I, how did how did we get from there to here? Cronk, uh, how, how did we get here? Well, you got me. By all accounts, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, see, I, it, th 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 there's just no explanation for this. I, <laughs> there, there is no proper realization of wrongdoing like there was for her in putting your hoof down. It just literally flipped the switch and oh. Now it's apology time. Uh, that, that just... And the, the worst thing about it is Fluttershy didn't even seem to be all that terribly sorry. I, I mean, um, you know, in, in times past when she's, you know, had a wake-up call and, and realized that she's done something, you know, really bad. I mean, there's, I think there's been times where she's, you know, practically, you know, um, bursting into tears and whatever, like just feeling absolutely horrible at what she had done and I mean she she did some some bad stuff here I mean she's calling her her animal friends rodents you know slamming doors in her friends faces insulting them 
Uh, and then you know, and then she she turned around to the raccoons and they're like, oh, you you know, I was just pretending, right? Like, wait, just a minute. Oh, okay, so so that's telling us what was going through your, your mind. You were just ha clinging desperately to these personas, to your acting performance, to try and fulfill a goal. But yet you, like I said before, you lost sight of that goal, and now it, the the apology just was not adequate. It, it doesn't seem like she was really acknowledging just how far she had taken things and was was truly sorry about it. It just the, the apology felt very weak. It, it did not really feel like an in-character type apology for Fluttershy. That's the part where I feel like she really went out of character was that ending. So, uh, well, and... and Aside from that, too, we didn't even really get a proper resolution to to see what lesson she had kind of learned. There was actually no real clear moral lesson in this that I could tell, other than just kind of a vague, you know, be true to yourself type of message, which we've heard before, and this wasn't anything particularly special along those lines. I mean, they, they noted that it said, okay, you don't have to act to... You know, put put on an act to really bring out your confidence. You can do it just as yourself. So that was kind of a point of this, I guess. But that's already something that, like, I don't even know why that needed to be a lesson for her. Because she's, in Fluttershy Lean's End, she already had become confident as herself. So, like, I don't feel like that was something she actually needed to learn. I, I just... The whole thing is just very murky and confusing. That's why I was so confused at the, at the end of this. It's, it's very unclear what the message of this was actually supposed to be. And, and yeah, so I felt like we should have gotten to see her continue to work as a sales pony, but as herself and be able to interact with all these different types of customers, different personalities as herself and successfully close deals and whatever. Like that would have been an accurate resolution to this would have showed you that she learned her lesson, overcame that, that mental block that she had, and fulfilled the goal. But we didn't get to see that. Though. All we got is her showing off the new dress that Rarity then created, and then kind of snapping at that, that uh, rude customer who was making accusations at Rarity, and even that wasn't really the, the proper sweet Fluttershy type of assertiveness. She kind of dipped back into that uh, personality number one a little bit again. There's a little bit of that posh accent and whatever, and it's just, you know, real angry look in her face and stuff. Uh, it just, it didn't really fit a, as, a, as a portrayal of her learning her lesson on this about how to be assertive properly. It just... So last episode, you know, I've made comparisons between this episode and the last one. The last episode was great. Pinky got to the point where she she got advice from from family and friends, uh, got pointed out to you know what she was doing wrong. She you know uh, had that realization and felt bad about it, and then took step to make uh, make amends. She went and apologized to to Mudbriar, extended the olive branch, and got together with him to put on the perfect party that Maud had wanted all along. That was firm proof that Pinky had learned her lesson and moved past it and, you know, got back on track. That just really didn't happen with Fluttershy here. There was no proper acknowledgement of lesson learned, I, f I felt like. So, it, it just, uh, it was frustrating and confusing for me. Because this ending just doesn't, doesn't make any sense. So... You know, there, there were some different things I, I felt like could have gone differently in this. I, I, I know this is getting long here, but I, I really need to finish my thoughts here. Um, well, the raccoons were there to help. They've been working there since since the place opened. I thought maybe it was a thing where Fluttershy was going to be able to talk to them and, like, they would be able to sort of coach her in terms of, you know, what they'd observe for sales techniques from Rarity or, you know, the, the merchandise, you know, uh, information about the merchandise being sold so that she could better answer their questions. Something like that. We've had a, a, a precedence for that before, too, of animals assisting Fluttershy in a goal. Like when they were helping her train in Hurricane Fluttershy or, you know, providing backstory information in Hillfields and the Colts. Uh, so, you know, that I felt like there could have been something there. Um, actually, even a better idea, though, 
It's like well, um, Rarity initially had second thoughts about leaving Fluttershy to, to work the shop on her own, and almost went back there. And I think if it almost would have been better if she had. Like it might have been a case where she decided to stay back after all, and then instead of letting, you know, just being there to be supportive of Fluttershy, she would have like thought that she was being supportive of Fluttershy, but then just kind of like taking over and doing everything herself and not really letting Fluttershy have a chance to actually, tr you know, truly try the job and succeed at it. You know, it's almost kind of the same uh, type of effect as like when Applejack was smothering Apple Bloom uh, in back in uh, Some Pony to Watch Over Me, just like overprotective and and you know not trusting and stuff. And and the lesson there is like Fluttershy would have had to um, uh, dip into her in, in, uh, into her strength and get the courage to stand up to Rarity to to, uh, to say hey you need to let me actually try i can do do this job and i can prove it to you but you need to back off and let me actually do it you know i i, th I think something like that would have actually proven the point of this a lot better perhaps but i don't know I mean, those ideas aren't fully fleshed out i realize there's flaws with with both of those for the premise of the story and stuff but it just i feel like there's this should have gone different somehow i i almost get the feeling that there was something that was cut from this episode due to time constraints from what the story was originally supposed to be i don't think that ending was supposed to be quite that rushed i think something got tweaked on this a little bit or, or something but <sighs> anyway yeah i said that there there was stuff about it i, I liked I, I really felt like this could have been a good moment for fluttershy for me the best fluttershy episode ever was fluttershy leans in because we got to see all, you know, the culmination of all these different lessons that, that she's learned, you know, all get put together and, you know, for the first time she's, you know, standing up for herself, you know, dealing with contractors and, you know, pushing forward on making her dream become a reality. I mean, that was the most epic moment for her ever, I felt like personally. I know other people didn't like that episode. They didn't feel like it was a good Fluttershy episode. Well, I thought maybe this episode here would be the perfect uh, time where it's like, okay, now we truly get to see Fluttershy's, uh, you know, self-confidence. Now that she seemed to have gotten, you know, to that next level, here's another new situation. Is she going to be able to tap into that confidence the same way? It could have been a good moment like that, but it just it kind of went backwards a little bit, I, I feel like. So, yeah, if if not for the the split personalities that were really add, adding some interesting uh, flavor to, to this story. Uh, it, it just, I feel like this this whole episode was just kind of very meh. So that that's that's my honest opinion on it. it. You know, it's not the worst episode in the show, but it's far from the best. Um, you know, R Rarity herself was actually, she's about the only other character to really analyze in this. The customers were basically to be taken at face value. Um, Rarity, I, I did like the fact that she, uh, you know, she was very supportive of Fluttershy. I, I don't understand why she went to so many others for help before Fluttershy. I mean, there there were some of them that made sense. Like um, Pinky actually was a great choice because Pinky works retail and she is great with people. Uh, you know, Twilight has great organization skills and attention to detail. You know, Starlight can definitely handle tough customers. You know, there's some good choices there. But then, you know, Applejack even has sales experience, even though she has nothing to do with uh, fashion, typically. But, I mean, some of these others, you know, Rainbow Dash, Big Mac, Granny Smith, DJ Pwn3, Mod, like, why? What skills or personality traits do they have that you, makes you think they would be a better fit to work in your boutique than Fluttershy? At least Fluttershy... In the past, it seems to have, I mean, she is known to have sewing skills and some knowledge of fashion, you know, based on stuff we saw back in season one. And that actually kind of got retconned from this episode a little bit because she was, you know, trying to make those tea cozies and they were horrific looking. And it's like, wait a minute, Fluttershy sewed together Rarity's dress back in Pursuited for Success. And, uh, and she was demanding French hot couture for her uh, gala dress. I mean, I feel like there's some stuff that kind of got tossed aside a little bit there for the purpose of the story but yeah whatever so 
yeah, I'm not really sure why they went to that. Oh, and the CMCs, too. That actually would have been a great uh, thing. If the CMCs had been the ones running the boutique in this episode, it would have been a completely different and utterly fantastic episode. I mean, the three of them trying different ways of running the shop and ultimately failing. And they were in Manhattan, so that would have been a perfect time to bring back Bab Seed as well. But, maybe someday. Anyway, um, but uh, other than that, I said Rarity was was great. She was, uh, you know, willing. To, she's willing to give Fluttershy a chance, and you know, said that she, you know, believing like you've conquered your your confidence issues, you know, a thousand times over. You can do this, and uh, and when she heard that things were going very badly in the shop, after all, she was right in the middle of one of the most important fashion shows, and she just dropped everything and ran with her friends to help Fluttershy. That speaks a lot to Rarity's character, and that that was fantastic of her to to do that. So, so so that was great. Um, and just a, another side thought here uh, regarding the school is interesting to see Twilight and Starlight still kind of holding down the fort there at the school, but everybody else is kind of back at the normal jobs. You know, I had concerns about how the running the school is going to affect their regular jobs and stuff. Still, really haven't seen what the school format looks like to know how they're going to balance that out but it looks like there is some balance there so that's at least uh, good to see and, uh, and as far as where starlight was in this episode this was kind of like the saddle roll review 2.0 and you know she was mysteriously absent from the first one well at least this time we saw her with some uh, like some fillies there in in the school in that one scene and like shaking her head no because like she's busy okay well the school probably needs to have at least somebody there all the time, you know, because there's students living there and stuff. Somebody needs to be there to hold down the fort. So probably makes sense that Starlight just stayed behind to attend to things there while Twilight and everyone else ran off to help Fluttershy. So that makes sense. But anyway, um, like I said, good good points to this episode, positive things. I'm, I, I've already been seeing some of the comics, and fan art, and memes, and whatever from this episode. It's fantastic. These new personalities of Fluttershy are going to be a lot of fun to, to play around with in fan comics and such. But it just I wish that ending had been more solid. If, if that ending had been solid, it would have made this a fantastic episode for me. Instead, it just kind of really fell flat. So there it is. That's my thoughts on it, and I hope you guys got something out of this. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm hoping for a better round next time uh, on this. You know, the, every episode has its, or every season has its weak episodes. This is going to be a, definitely a weak one for for season eight. I, I hope I hope it's all uphill from here. I I, I really do, because I I don't like speaking poorly about our favorite characters or any of these episodes. I really, you know, Fluttershy is like my my second favorite character of the main six. I don't like sitting here and having to say, hey, you screwed up. But <laughs> I, I'm not going to hold a grudge or anything like that. I'm really not. Uh, it's it's not ultimately that big of a deal. I, I just just wish things could have gotten a, gone a little better. Fortunately, and I will say this too, as far as her friends go, both, you know, the pony friends and animal friends, you know, they were all um, very, very good in forgiving her so, so readily, you know, accepting her apology and moving past it. So I do appreciate that too. And I, that, that, that's sort of like a side takeaway from this too, is like when, you know, when somebody does screw up, uh, you know, no matter how badly, you know, and they apologize for it, it is good to be able to accept the apology, let the water go under the bridge and just move forward and not hold grudges. So, so that is a good little side moral to this. So, Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Um, sorry for rambling on so long about this, but just things I needed to say. And, um, yeah, definitely f looking forward to next episode. And as I mentioned, uh, this coming weekend, I've got uh, Winnie City PonyCon coming up. So not sure when I'll get the next reaction done and uploaded. Um, just I will do it when I can. That's all I can promise right now. So until then, have a great night.